Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. Today we have Chicagoland Speedway in the Monster Energy Cup Series. You see the point in standings up on your screen right now. We sit 14th in the playoff standings but 6th in the regular standings. And unfortunately we need to be in the top 10 in the playoff standings to get a 5 star offer from a team. So it's sitting in a rough position right now we are so hopefully we can uh, improve in the top 10 with maybe a victory here anytime soon now to uh, propel myself into the top 10 of the playoff standings but we come straight to our qualifying lap through turns three and four uh, we had to use a full-on custom setup here just to have any type of speed as we cut the apron coming to the line and right here you see we set we set a 29.446 and that will start us in p17 for Chicagoland, so pretty much average for us. Hello everyone and welcome to Chicagoland Speedway for today's running of the Overton's 400. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series is stopping in Joliet much earlier than in years past. Up until the beginning of the 2018 season, this venue hosted the first event of the playoffs, but now it closes out the first half of the regular season. Whenever Chicagoland appears on the schedule, this 1.5-mile D-shaped tri-oval is going to be a formidable challenge. Will we see a close finish, or will someone breeze into victory lane here in the Windy City? Let's send it down to the track as the green flag is in the air. All right, we are ready to go green in Chicagoland. Ty Dillon sent to the back after failing optical st uh, scanning station multiple times. Jimmy Johnson also starting in the back due to an engine change and Kyle Busch crashed during qualifying so he is in a backup car as we did gain two positions from those guys having issues so we're actually going to be starting now in P15 for Chicago as the green flag waves and Kevin Harvick will lead us to the green has been having one heck of a season so far and he looks to continue his dominance over everybody else in the field at this point as we approach turn one he has Ryan Blaney on his outside in second place trying to lead the outside line but it's not going to work as Bubba Wallace is about to edge ahead of Blaney as Bubba Wallace had a solid start last race and now here he is again with a solid start as well maybe he can pull something off as we stick the car under Eric Almirola in the 10 Smithfield Ford Fusion in turns three behind the three of Austin Dillon as we exit turn four certainly an opportunity to cut down to the apron and force the three wide on him and Almirola and that's exactly what I decided to do as we approach turns one Kozlowski leaves the hole open so we take full advantage of that just trying to gain as many positions as soon as possible before we start to get spread out a little bit in this race now as we look to the inside of Newman already getting into a top 10 position as Kurt Busch looks to maybe get down in front of me but he leaves the hole open so we slide in there as well as we exit turn four alongside him getting close to his door just about making a little bit of contact on his left side as we cross the line to complete the first two laps of this race as we clear Kurt Busch and it turns one getting just about into the back of Chase Elliott in the nine car for P8 but certainly a solid start to this race as we come to lap four running behind the 78 of true XCC Bubba Wallace has fallen back quite a bit as we now go under the 78 on the back straightaway trying to gain another position or two as we fade in behind Bubba Wallace getting a little bit loose into turns three but we hold onto the card just fine as the 43 is falling fast as we look to his inside to make a little bit of contact on his left rear but uh, no harm done there as we cross the line to take P7 from Bubba Wallace now as we sit behind the nine car of Chase Elliott who sits in P6 behind Denny Hamlin up there holding the last spot in the top five as he battles uh, Joey Logano and we did hold on to P6 throughout this run uh, we passed Chase Elliott though and now Alex Bowman he's on my bumper trying to make a pass on me as we just kind of got off the inside line just for a brief moment and you see exactly what happens when you just can't hold the bottom at a track like Chicago Bowman flies by me and then Truex he follows through and certainly know what we needed early on but we drift back to P8 with nine laps to go in stage one now as we enter turns one, slowing up a little early, getting in behind the 78 of Truex, running that bottom line as we exit turn two, going down the back straightaway with a chance to pass the 78 as we look to his inside, going into turns three, trying to regain a spot. Now as we clear him, 
just about for P6 as we come through the center of the corner. And yes, we do clear Truex now for the sixth position on the exit of turn four as Elliott follows in behind him to try and steal the position as well as Bowman and tries to drive away, but we're not going to allow that. Now as we come to just a few laps later in this run, just three laps to go in stage one. Now still riding behind the 88 of Bowman and Elliott still behind me. So nothing much has changed at this point in the stage. A little bit of a run down the back straightaway, maybe a chance to look on the outside even if we wanted to, but the stage ends early due to someone having some type of issue. I'm not sure what happened, I could not find it in the replay mode, but someone crashed or something and the caution came out ending stage one early as Ryan Blaney pulls off the stage victory to get a playoff point as we're going to take four tires and I put the wedge down just a tiny bit trying to make the car a little bit looser and we come out just where we came in, P6. So now we will be restarting on the outside line, not what we need. Uh, so we're probably going to have a pretty bad restart as the green flag is back out. This time Ryan Blaney leads us to the green flag as Harvick is on his outside leading the outside lane into turns one. Hopefully he can have a little bit better of a start than uh, he or Blaney did on the initial start on the outside. Now as Logano gets forced out to the outside of a three wide as Bowman forced a three wide of the inside of him and Stenhouse. So now we fade back all the way almost outside the top ten as I start slowing down a little bit mid straightaway letting Suarez clear me as we try to get down. But Hamlin's there and we make contact on his right front tire or right front fender and we just about wrecked the car but thankfully we hold on to it. That nearly turned into a crash. We end up losing quite a few positions obviously fading outside the top 20 now as Bubba Wallace tries to make the pass on me as we try to use the outside line maybe to propel back ahead of him as we can actually kind of use it against these guys back here as we have the 48 of Jimmy Johnson now who's caught me obviously uh, he started in the back due to an engine change as we go into turns three clearing the 43 of Bubba Wallace as we slide down to the bottom in front of him to re-enter the top 20 but certainly that incident with Hamlin was 100% my fault not what we needed obviously but now we got to get out of this and work our way back forwards as we make a three wide with Almarola through turns one as he has Paul Menard in the 21 car on his outside as he backs out of the three wide now behind the 10 of Almarola as we go down the back straightaway side drafting Almarola into turns three as we run down the 24 of Byron in the three of Dylan who battles side by side but Byron's going to get clear out of turn four as we try to get at least to the inside of the three but man it's really hard with the 10 side drafting me but we do get ahead of the 10 and clear as we go on the inside of Austin Dillon into turns one as we now try to use the draft from William Byron to get clear of the three as we do indeed clear Austin Dillon down the back straightaway to rally back to P17 so quite a uh, quite a bit of work yet we got to do to get to where we need to be I want to be at least in the top 10 um, by the end of the stage but it's going to be hard to do that now as we cut the apron a little bit look into the inside of William Byron as we make a little bit of contact on his left rear fender but no harm done as we go into turns one as he's pretty tight on my door but we're gonna try and just edge him out as on the exit of turn two but he's gonna hang on my right rear for a moment but Clint Boyer he starts to slow up and that allows me to clear the 24 as we go into turns three and we should clear the 14 as well now as we have entered the top 15 once again in this race as we have run down the 6 of Trevor Bain and the 34 of Michael McDowell and we got repassed by William Byron and Clint Boyer unfortunately but we certainly have the speed to uh, beat these guys it's just I was struggling quite a bit getting around the 34 and the 6 of Trevor Bain and then that allowed the 14 of Boyer and then 24 of Byron to get back past me now as we re-clear the 24 as we look to the inside once again of Boyer into turns 3 behind the 6 of Bain who's been giving me a really hard time he's been kind of blocking the inside line into turns 1 quite a bit throughout this run and that was making it very frustrating but we did eventually get back past the, um, the 6 and the 34 to work our way up to P13 about halfway through this stage now as you can see quite a ways back from the next handful of cars so a top 10 in this stage isn't looking like it's going to happen as we come to a lap later still struggling and I think the adjustment we made to this car was actually uh, an adjustment that we did not need to make because the car seemed quite a bit slower through the corners now as you can see the 34 behind me in my mirror is actually able to hang with me now instead of us just driving away so certainly 
Not what I'm needing right now as we come to now lap 17 of 19 in stage 2. Just three laps ago, you see these guys behind me have run me down. Al Marola has gotten to my back bumper, and so has Jimmy Johnson, who made a move to his inside, trying to get ahead of him down the back straightaway now. So certainly not in a good position right now, but we're trying our best to at least hang on to P13 before this stage ends, just so we can at least restart hopefully on the inside as we exit turn four to hit two laps to go in stage two as Johnson is all over my back bumper looking to make a pass but we're just gonna maintain the inside line and not allow that to happen you see the cars ahead have uh, completely driven away from me so we have not even had a chance to run them down unfortunately and I know that once the stage is over we're going to put the wedge back to where it was and hopefully that will fix the bit of the issue that we've been having as we hit the apron in the middle of turn three and slide up the track but get down in front of the 48 as we take the white flag now in stage two as we come up the track just to keep that 48 from getting alongside me as we enter turns one and two through the center of the corner just trying to hang on to the position and I'm pretty sure that we're going to be able to do it now as long as I don't screw up turns three and four as we block the 48 going down the back straightaway as we come into turns three a whole bunch of cars right behind me the 48 the 3 the 14 the 21 and several others as we come through the center of the corner on the exit of turn four we're going to get P13 in stage two. Kevin Harvick fell all the way back to P11 before the stage ended. You certainly wouldn't expect to see him this far back as we're going to definitely put the wedge up to 54.6 again and uh, hopefully that will fix the problems that we were having uh, in this stage because we were way off pace even uh, after we had that contact with Denny Hamlin. So hopefully we can turn it around as we lost 14 positions because we had to take four tires and the AI don't have tire wear in this game. But the green flag is back up behind the 18 of Kyle Busch. We know he's not very happy with us right now, so I'm going to avoid running into him uh, at all costs as we look to his inside straight away as the last stage gets underway. But once again now, we got to work our way back towards the top 10. Certainly not what we need as we have Kyle Busch on my back bumper as we get into the back of AJ Allmendinger on the exit of turn 2 down the back straight away as we sit in P25. For the moment as we look to the inside for a brief moment but Almendinger he shuts the door not allowing me to make a move on his inside as we exit turn four gaining a position over Cody Ware or Harrison Rhodes sorry as we make a little bit of contact with him but by lap 45 we worked our way into the top 20 behind Eric Almarola who's battling alongside the three of Austin Dillon so I decided to try and get under the 10 and make it three wide as we go into turns three with him and the three through the center of the corner we're going to gain two positions of um, out of turns three and four to get up to P17 behind the 48 and the 34 of McDowell and Johnson as we get alongside the 48 of Johnson and we look to the inside with a little bit of an ambitious move kind of cutting the apron at the last second to get under the 34 as we clear him to re-enter the top 15 and I noticed immediately um, that the adjustment we made to put the car back to what it used to be in stage one certainly was benefiting us greatly as we already get back up to P14 only one spot worse than where we ended stage two and there's Bowman in 13th right in front of us that's where we finished in stage two but as this run went on we got into quite the battle as we got past Bowman and now trying to pass Chase Elliott as we exit turn two making a little contact with the nine car on the exit of turn two but we held on and this battle with Elliott continued on for the next handful of laps or so and this is not the first time we've had quite the battle with him just like Kansas now as we look to his inside once again a few laps later and once again we get into the side of Elliot on the exit of two but we hang on to the car this time once again as well down the back straightaway just cannot get past the nine he was really giving me a hard time as we look to his inside again a few moments later and just could not get past him as he was just doing a really good job fighting me off and it was starting to get pretty frustrating at this point because I knew we had the speed to get past him and he was just doing such a good job uh, holding me off and I just I wanted to just shove him out of the way at this point but given the track that we were at it didn't make sense to even move him but now we come to lap 52 running P12 behind him and this time we full send it through turns one and not look back as we just make a power move right on by the nine cars he tries to hang on my right rear we thought we had the move done but hold on he's back on my outside as we go into turns three as we finally clear the nine 
that was certainly one of the more annoying battles I've had with the driver this season. I really just wanted to get him out of here. Now as we come across the line with just 15 laps to go, sitting P11 behind Suarez, and that battle certainly uh, halted my progress on getting back up towards the front of this field. Unfortunately, as we approach the back of Suarez, now slowly closing in on him with not many laps to go as we come to lap 54 though we did run him down on his back bumper as we come out of turn two down the back straight away trying to get a run on his inside now it's going to turn three and he checks up and we hit him in the back and sideways we go as bowman we hit, just about hit bowman as now the nine comes to our outside and we make contact with elliot now as we come back up the track and into the wall we go hard and that's going to bring up the caution and completely destroy our race and I mean, I don't know, I, I guess that was my fault, but Suarez checked up right in front of me, and I hit him in the right rear, and just could not hang on to the car as we made contact with Elliot, of course, on the exit of turn four, so, uh, I don't know, uh, if that was my fault, let me know in the comments, I'd like to hear what you guys think on, uh, whose fault that was, uh, likely mine, but now we are gonna be restarting dead last with just ten laps to go, so the rest of this run, obviously, just recovery mode trying to work our way back up as far as we could before this race was over aiming at this point really for just a top 25 if we could do that then um, I wouldn't be terribly disappointed with the outcome but we had speed in this race and I know we had maybe a top five car maybe even a chance at a victory based off the speed we had in stage one and uh, everything has kind of not gone the way we needed it to throughout the rest of this race unfortunately as now we come to complete the first lap of this restart and up to p36 so not in good shape as we now look to the inside of reagan going into turns one trying to make it three wide now as we get ahead of him for the moment now on the inside of newman who's having a terrible run as we get past him on the inside of Greg Galding, but now we come to lap 60 in this race. We've worked our way inside the top 30 now up to P29 under Bubba Wallace in the number 43 car through the center of the corner now behind Chris Busher as we exit turn four, just trying to gain as many spots as possible as we use the apron to run to make it three wide as we cross the line to hit seven laps to go in this race as we now edge out ahead of Busher going into turns one as we easily clear him and now our next target is our teammate Jamie McMurray and we got past him and we got up to P23 with four laps to go in this race as we look to the inside of Michael McDowell now on the exit of turn two trying to gain another position as we have approached the back bumper of Jimmy Johnson in the 48. As we go into turn three though he's going to kind of block the inside line not allowing me to make the move obviously through the center of the corner as we exit turn four still side by side with McDowell for the moment as he's just going to hang on my right rear now side draft me to get a run as we go into turns one now behind Harrison Rhodes in the 51 car as we get a big run on him and we look to his inside through the center of the corner and we're definitely going to be able to edge him out in the in a moment here as we try to use the draft from the 48 to maybe clear him with ease but we're going to turns three and he obviously slows up pretty early now as we come through turns three and four on the exit of turn four to take the white flag this time by be still behind the 48 of jimmy johnson he sits p19 as austin dillon he's on the outside line kind of getting shuffled out as we force inside jimmy johnson through turns one and two a very ambitious late move on him as we come out of turn two to clear the 48 now alongside the three of austin dillon down the back straight away for the final time in this race as we come through turns three and four for the final time as william byron currently holds the position over or just ahead of me as we exit turn four ahead of the three and the 48 and someone's smoking in the back but that doesn't matter we're gonna get p18 in chicago after a very unfortunate turn of uh, events that happened in this race and uh, it was it was my fault. We screwed up and uh, we paid the price for it with finishing in 18th. So not much we can do about it at this point. And uh, let's just see who won the race. Danica Patrick finished last. Okay. And Ryan Blaney gets the victory in all Penske top three. So good job for the Penske cars. And uh, not a good job for us because we certainly uh, had speed and screwed up there. But... Um, Hopefully next time in Daytona, maybe we can pull something off. I doubt it. Uh, play tracks are pretty hard to dominate or at least take the lead at because it's really, it's the plate racing is weird in this game. But uh, we're going to try our best when it comes to Daytona to maybe get a win there as Danica Patrick. She loves racing with me and so does William Byron, who's a really good friend apparently. And now Matt Benedetto loves racing with me. So... 
We don't have anyone mad at us, so that's uh, at least a plus. I'm surprised Chase Elliott's not mad. But uh, next race will be the um, truck series with Haley Deegan in Gateway, which she's probably not going to run very good there because it's very hard at Gateway to run well. And then we'll have Daytona for my race in the Cup Series. So I'll show you guys the standings. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys next time. So thank you for watching, everybody. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care and have a great day.